Let me just talk on our schedule first. Um, you know, I think it's going to be a, a, a it's a good schedule. Um, again, I, and I said this in the in the press release as well. This is year two of our of our situation. It's not year six. It's not year eight. It's year two. Uh, um, I think we have a good non-conference schedule. When you're talking, when I tell other teams around the country, other coaches about who we're playing, they're like, "Man, that's a good schedule." And um, and again, you can't base on what everything was done on last year. We had done research on what we feel what these teams will be as we go into the future. Uh, some of the teams were, were locked in based on an event when we played against LSU uh, in, in the exempted event that will play LSU in Tupelo, Mississippi. Um, but otherwise, uh, I think it's a, it's a challenging schedule. It's a good schedule. Um, and it, everyone's got to remember that we are young. I mean, are we talented? Yes, but we are young. Not, we've got to get everyone, which I expect, everyone through the clearinghouse. And, uh, um, and I think it's going to be ready for us and, and an improved Conference USA with, you know, with more new coaches and everything else. So I think it's a good balance and test from, uh, from top to bottom. Well, the, 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 the whole thing is, um, you know, looking at the schedule when we were, you know, getting it together. Um, and technically, let me just even, before I even hit on that one part, you know, like people are talking about centenary, that they're going to eventually go to Division III um, in, in a year or so. Well, when we put the schedule together, that wasn't the case. Um, that was not even talked about. That was, you know, we, that just, that just ha that happened after contracts were signed and everything else. Uh, and then regarding some of the other things that we looked into, uh, into the teams, we really did research on the rosters to see who was going to be returning, where teams were uh, possibly going to be projected to pick uh, in their conference, and that's what we wanted to uh, to play. Now, here's the thing: everyone, and I and I'm talking, uh, I've talked to Gary Johnson, who who is in charge of the RPI with the NCAA. I've we had Jerry Palm talk to us at the conference um, uh, league meetings. Um, Greg Shaheen, who is in charge of the men's basketball um, committee. Uh, as in terms of overseeing the entire thing with the NC2A, as in terms of the television contracts and everything else. Every one of those guys talked about, you know, you talked about RPI, RPI, or, or the numbers. The biggest thing is teams that you play need to win 18 to 24 games. It doesn't matter who they play, how they play now. It's got to be Division One opponents. That's, that's the thing. It's got to be Division One out of those, those things. But that is the most important thing is in that stretch there of teams that you play, Win or lose, the teams that you're playing, the most important thing is that they win 18 to 24 games total. That's in that stretch there. Anything more than 24 is great, but it's got to be at least 18. I mean, that's, that's the big magic number. 20, is that's, that's when you're really starting moving up. So um, that's what we're looking at. More so than I know everyone talks about, well, this team had a low RPI. Or this team's are. It's not about the RPI numbers. It's about the wins. Will they get 18 to 24 wins? Um, in their time uh, for the season. Obviously, they've got to do their job like we have to do our job during the, during the year. Well, you're, you're, sure yeah, well, you're doing a lot of projecting. I mean, that's the biggest thing. You're projecting. You're, you're um, um, predicting of what could happen. Uh, you're looking at their recruiting classes, who's returning, all those different things. And, and here's the other thing with us. You know, everyone says, well, you play this opponent, play that opponent. There's a few things to think about. We've got to get a certain amount of home games. I mean, those are the facts. I mean, I'm required per our, per our administration, we've got to have a certain amount of home games. So, yes, we can get home games, but then in the following year, you've got to return them to the, to the, to the back to that spot. So um, it's not as easy as it sounds. And uh, sometimes teams don't just want to play Memphis. I mean, I know sometimes teams say, well, yeah, we'll play you. But, again, it's either a home and home. Um, or it wants to be a neutral site. We need to have home games, especially in, 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 in with, from the administration. They want us to have as many home games as, as we can because that's important. And, and, and still have good names, and I think we do that. You know, it's unfortunate uh, that the Gonzaga-Tennessee series is together instead of alternating. That would probably be, that would, I know that would make the fans a little more happier if it was alternating where one or the other was, one was at home, one was on the road. But um, again, I think it's a solid schedule. It's a good schedule. We are in year two. We do have a young team, talented, figuring everyone gets through the clearinghouse. We, we have a good team and um, a young team, but the schedule's challenging enough and will give us a lot of good tests uh, throughout, uh, throughout the season. No, that, that's a good point. Let me say this on, on Miami. Um, you know, if you look at 
Dick Vitale's top 40. I mean, he's Miami's in there. If you looked at some other preseason uh, predictions, Miami's to, to is predicted to finish in the you know top half of the ACC. So, um, and they are they have recruited ACC you know players. I mean, good players. Uh, so they're going to be a good game, and that's going to be a national televised game. Uh, it'll be at 11 p.m. local time. Uh, it'll be the kickoff of college basketball, like it was a few years ago when we played UMass. Uh, and then you know, Georgetown's a good home game. Look. I understand from the fans' perspective. If I was sitting in their chairs, I want us to play this name, that name, this name. That. I can totally understand it. I totally understand. I totally get it. Um, but again, in the position that I'm in, in the chair that I'm in, I've got to also recognize, okay, that uh, what is best to build as we keep going, you know, to, to in the future. I mean, here's the thing: as is, is, and I've said this. Um, I mean, we were, you know, drowning last year before we even stepped on the court. I mean, drowning. We got to a Bowie and, 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 and we were able to kind of hang on and there's been a ship to kind of get us there. But we haven't got to land yet and been out of the woodworks. I mean, we still have, we still got to put multiple recruiting classes together. We still got to produce on the court. And, and again, it's not happening overnight. It's going to keep taking time. And, uh, and you look at the following year, you know, because of the situation, Tennessee and Gonzaga come back to your home base. and. Um, and we'll be, have to return the game to Miami and return the game to Georgetown. So there's going to be other situations like that. And, and you're right, LSU would have been nice to have been at home, but technically, even though it's not a home game, it's, it's close enough for, for the fans to uh, drive up and, and make it a home game in Tupelo. Yeah, Bahamas, uh, we will start practicing August 2nd. Um, we were allowed 10 days of practices, 10 days. Uh, what I plan on doing is we'll practice starting August 2nd, and the practices might not be just full out practice. They could be just individual works, individual workouts those days, maybe just straight shooting. Obviously, we're not going to have our system to put in place because that the August time period will give me an opportunity for, for, uh, for me to really see them and, and the strengths and weaknesses and where we need to get better and for them to kind of get a feel for me, for the new guys. So we'll do a lot of individual work. We'll spend a lot of time on defense, on rebounding. Um, but what we'll plan on doing is practice four days, take a day off, practice four days, take a day off, practice two days, uh, and then we'll head out to the Bahamas uh, on the 14th through the 18th of August. We'll leave the 14th, we'll play two games, and come back the 18th. Uh, everyone to, to be eligible to, to play it or to, to practice, uh, two things. You have to um, um, have been completed three hours of for incoming freshmen, incoming freshmen, you have to have completed three hours, but be in a minimum of six class, six units of classes, which everyone is. And then the second thing, everyone has to be cleared by the clearinghouse in order to practice. Um, and again, we're not the only schoolers. It's it's going through. It's nationwide, but that's we're waiting on that. I expect and I expect everyone to be cleared uh, by the beginning of August. That's that's my expectation. And uh, if that's the case, then everyone can practice. Everyone will be cleared. But when you sign that many guys. There's going to be a lot of paperwork and documentation needed, and it just takes a little longer than, than the normal routine. Once every four years, you can go, once every four years, you're allowed to take a foreign trip. But this is a new rule that was instituted that you can, you can have incoming freshmen be on the trip and practice if they've, if they've cleared by the clearinghouse, are a qualifier and cleared by the clearinghouse, and they've passed three units but, are taking at but have to take a minimum of six, but they have to pass three. 